Okay, for anyone who is leveling up in their career, promotion, maybe looking for a new job, you can relate to this. Also, before we get into the story, thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring part of this video. You oftentimes are looking around, what is in demand? Where should I put my focus? And most importantly, where am I going to put my time? Which as we continue to grow in our career and age, the time becomes more and more valuable. That is why I'm going to share with you some of the top in-demand tech skills that you can put your focus to right now. Before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like button, and leave down below any other video topics or questions you have. All right, now let's get into it. Although many on this list may surprise you as some of the most in-demand tech skills, I have to start with probably, no, not probably, the biggest one. It would be crazy if I didn't include it. Can you guess what it is? Let me give you a hint. Actually, speaking of AI, before I share with you some valuable courses you can take, skills you can learn to really be able to put AI and different sectors of it on your resume to start really going after that skill, I want to share with you how you can use AI to quickly generate copy for landing pages, websites, ads, any campaign. And this can all be done with just a few clicks thanks to HubSpot's campaign assistant. Check this out. First, you need to select your asset type. Let's choose the landing page content. Next, we can start with letting AI know what our campaign is about. This is my favorite part, by the way, as I often have an idea of what I want this campaign to be about, what I want to say on a landing page or email, but I have trouble actually diving into the details of it. This way, I can simply input my ideas and share what my campaign is about. And that is it. I now have this generated copy of what my campaign is about and can simply copy this and input it into my landing page or email, ads, etc. This literally took a matter of seconds. I linked down below HubSpot's campaign assistance so you can go check it out today and start utilizing this. It has saved me so much time. I mean, I, I really prefer to put my time and I think it's a great use of an AI tool. I want to focus on bigger picture things, on working on strategy, on execution. Whereas things like this that can be done by AI, pass it off to my, my AI assistant. All right, let's get back to how to gain skills within artificial intelligence. Actually, one of the reports I saw that was really interesting was from Gardner, who said over 50% of enterprises will be using AI chatbots by 2030, which is now. So the need for AI is going to continue to evolve and grow and experts within this, both on the technical and also to the business side. Now, as someone who is very clearly passionate about artificial intelligence and really many different facets within it, here are some courses that I've been checking out. One is through Coursera. They have so many different options and I really, really trust their recommendations. Their courses are always done by really well-renowned universities or colleges. The other is Udacity, which has a really great artificial intelligence intelligent courses to take as well. Also too, some skills that are very in demand include learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, they are highly sought after. The average salary actually for AI engineers is around 142,000 US. And this information is actually from 2022. I believe by now, 2023, that would have rapidly increased. I've been looking on different job postings in the AI world and I saw one the other day it was for a director of AI engineering. I think it was for just under 500,000. I want that job. That's wild. Obviously there are a ton of different uh, requirements and years and years of experience, but the jobs are out there, the money is out there. You just need to start learning the skills. Next on the list is low code development. And I know all you developers and engineers who are watching this are gonna be like, Tip, what do you mean low code? I feel like inherently as a developer, it is in our nature to resist low code platforms. And I hear you, there in the past has been a lot of not great flexibility or functionality with these low code platforms, but they have come such a long way and they are continuing to rise in demand, which to me makes complete sense for someone who is able to get really familiarized with a low code platform. Platform, you are able to build quicker and also to more standardized, especially as you get into these large enterprise companies. There are tons of different low code tools out there that you can use. So it's not necessarily a course that you have to take on low code, but more so a mindset of being open to really embracing these tools and learning how they work. Now, that being said, it's equally 
actually more important to understand the, the foundations before you start picking up low code. Really understand a programming language, really understand the technology behind it. We can't solely rely on low code tools. However, by being open to these tools and picking them up quickly, it will really set you apart. I see over and over again, more companies coming out with low code options. So it's going to be essential for a lot of developers and other individuals who aren't developers to start learning these tools. Next on the list caused a massive debate, by the way, on uh, another social, it was TikTok. I posted a video on this, which is SQL, or as I pronounced it in the video, SQL. What team are you on? SQL or SQL? I know correctly, if we wanna do it properly, it's SQL, but SQL just, it sounds really fun. How do you pronounce it? SQL is actually one of the most in-demand tech skills. LinkedIn reported that 74% of annual growth has occurred for the demand of SQL. So it's not going anywhere, it's continuing to rise. And this makes total sense to me. I remember when I was working at uh, a past company I was working at, even the business analysts used SQL because they were able to make queries uh, for different data around customer reports that they were looking for or information that they could easily access. Having an understanding and being able to use SQL to your benefit is not just for developers, not just for data analysts or data scientists. It is for business individuals as well, and it's really continuing to go in that way. SQL is one of those things that having an understanding of the basics, like a base level, is pretty easy to do. There are a ton of courses online. I'll list some here. So you can kind of choose from how deep you want to go depending on your role. But being able to put SQL or SQL on your resume will really help you stand out. Now, how do you gain these skills? Other than taking courses I just shared with you, the best way is to build small projects with them. Some projects that would include uh, data analysts or visualization. All right, the next one is an area that I'm really interested in, fascinated with. I don't know if I'll ever get to utilizing this in my career, but I should make it more of a hobby, which is robotics. Robotics is continuing to be on the rise, and this is something that you can start tinkering with right now, today. Employees with robotic skills are highly sought after. Actually, the robotics market is estimated to reach 237 billion by 2027. And this is a really great way, or what excites me about robotics is being able to merge software with hardware. It feels kind of like you're a kid again. I mean, until something breaks and isn't working and then the stress comes on. But a great way to kind of get your feet wet with robotics is of course through things like Raspberry Pi, Arduino boards, different technologies that you can order to your home and start tinkering. There are so many great resources, especially for Raspberry Pi online. There's this website right here that I absolutely love. They have so many different project ideas to start building with and also to from beginner to advanced. There's kind of something for everyone. The last one is actually, you know what, before I get to the last one, can we just have a moment for, let me share with you here. This is totally random, but I wanna share with you. Look at this outfit I got. How cute is this? This is totally non-tech related, but I'm really loving it. Anyways, okay, back to the point, which is actually, I kind of look like one, what I'm about to say, which is a cloud. Cloud computing, I mean, I had to include it in this list. I tried to make some, new, think of some different ones and research some different ones that I just mentioned. However, cloud computing, it, it wouldn't feel right if it wasn't part of this list. Actually, cloud computing has become mainstream with 77% of enterprises having at least one application on the cloud. Now, courses around cloud computing feel endless. Of course, there are all the AWS certifications around the cloud that are a great way to go. It's probably one of the best ways to go, especially because it is so well regarded. Even if you end up in a job that is not using these certifications, showing that you committed to them and went through with them is really powerful. The other way to go is once again, back to Coursera or Udemy, where you can take a lot of these cloud computing courses that have both from the business side, but also to the technical side. So depending on where you land in that. All right, those are five skills in the tech industry that are going to be not only currently most in demand, but will continue to be for the future. These are areas that when I was doing my research are continuing to grow and highly sought after. At the end of the day though, it's important to be aware of these areas because putting your focus and attention to them is really important, but don't become overwhelmed with it that you have to learn every area or skill that I just listed. Pick something, focus in on it, hone in on it, become an expert in it. And then from there, you can choose if you want to really dive into it or continue to evolve. 
once again, going back to this idea of being a specialist or generalist. This is something I wanted to put together for you though, as we are halfway through, over halfway through 2023, and understanding where you want to put your time and energy into. We have half the year left, and honestly, I know for myself, it's it was kind of like, ah, I'm just gonna cruise through the last half of the year, but then I was like, let me find where I can take a really good course, where I can really dive into something, because one thing I have learned thus far in my career and also too on my entrepreneurial journey is that you never will regret learning something new and taking those courses. So I'll leave you with that. All right, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you like some of these more casual but informative conversations we have, any suggestions you have. And also too, I linked HubSpot's campaign assistant down below. Go check it out, start using AI to help you work better and be able to put more time into really complex things versus something that AI can do for you. All right, see you all soon. Thanks everyone.